on that particular front, but we want to hear from you. We have a question of the day. Let's have that up on screen. Which pillar of the Big Four agenda has benefited your county? Once again, which pillar of the Big Four agenda has benefited your county? You can send us your feedback on the WhatsApp number at the bottom of your screen. You can also get me on Twitter at I am Jeff Morton or at K24TV. Let's see uh, some of the messages you've sent. Uh, morning, Jeff. Doctors should also prioritize what they need to be immediately solved. Right now, they have like a thousand needs that they want to be addressed uh, at the same time, which is impossible. And to just us what is the correlation between BBI and doctors pay the BBI didn't stop the government from working we have all the institutions in place running let's not politicize everything okay let's have another uh, message up 14 billion and the money we are spending on the BBI process can be able to take care of our medics and do much more we as a people of Kenya are not convinced that BBI is a governance solution and dossier we have been waiting for we must address the root causes of electoral violence uh, we, we already have uh, the Kenya Bila Uchaguzi initiative by PSG uh, we don't need elections in Kenya again it's a very divisive expensive emotive tribalistic electoral process that's Esther Waringa she was on the show before uh, giving um, her opinion and how we should move forward as far as electoral processes are concerned. Uh, thanks for that, of course. Uh, we have another message. Uh, there is zero big four achievement in Meru County. Our health care remains pathetic. No manufacturing growth. Minimal improvement in agriculture. The housing has even become worse than before. That's Nesh from Meru. Okay, keep them coming in, of course. Uh, the WhatsApp number is at the bottom of the screen. Uh, you can also get me at I am Jeff Morten or at K24TV. Uh, going through the discussion with Arnold Maleba, Joe Devo, uh, and on Skype, joined by Justice Minor. Um, we have three other pillars of this uh, Big Four agenda, but also to finance all of these, uh, it seems like we'll have to go deeper and deeper into debt. And as it stands right now, Arnold, that's the one thing people are wondering, how much more can this country actually take? When do we get the final straw that breaks the back? We are already past what we can actually chew. We are chewing more than, or rather we are biting more than we can chew. Uh, and you need to look at how much we are taking in debt. If you look at the post-COVID, or rather post-COVID recovery strategy, we are looking at one billion. Uh, one we, trillion. Uh, well, one trillion, I mean. Mm. So at one trillion, when we already had to lift our borrowing ceiling to nine trillion, we are pacing up towards, uh, I think we are at 7.1. Mm -hmm. So we have got less than uh, 1.8 trillion to hit the ceiling. And at this rate, at this very rate, you automatically will be there next year. And then we will lift it to 12 trillion, and then we will borrow and then uh, get into perpetuity. So we will get into a spin. Borrowing in itself is not wrong. Uh, that is how, of course, we get to build businesses we need to actually. But then how are we using that money? Truth be told, that there is a lot of, that is actually being done at the moment, much more than uh, uh, what was happening. But you see, it's not just in the doing. I have said this before, that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So even as we point at the dams we are building, at the roads and the mega projects and everything else, and that is one of the problems by there that is actually facing our uh, human resource management in counties, not just with doctors. Because governors are obsessed, for example, with things that can be touched buildings coming up with things that people can see and you can you can actually put on a a, a signpost uh, a project of governor so and so so we really do not think that uh, building capacity and actually enhancing uh, the human resource management or rather the availability of personnel is a big issue because you know you cannot put posters or a stamp on their face this one is employed courtesy of governor so and so it doesn't bring votes so our governors are obsessed with the big infrastructure and everything else Knowing, uh, yet we forget that development is people. By and large, even as we talk about infrastructure and all the other enablers, development is by and large people. If it cannot reflect in people's lives, it's not worth it. So when you talk about economic growth and it does not show in your life, Jeff, uh, literally, we probably are just helping a few people. So it's also possible to have economic growth out there and the indicators look so good. You look at GDP and it's uh, glossy. But when it comes to people, you realize that there's no trickle-down effect. So we need to look down around that and just work out that. So you're talking about Big Four. I would rather that we call this Big Five. Because after the Big Four, there is the BBI, which is actually now the biggest of all them. So we had the Big Four. Now we have got BBI as another one of those. Uh, we are adding it and making it Big Five. And apparently BBI is much bigger. You saw what the former Prime Minister yes, said yesterday. We've discussed that. There's anger. Uh, Busia Governor Jamong is actually being his own record, saying that governor, uh, doctors and medics should be uh, 
patient until BBI is over, then we can actually look into the issues. So I think for me, this is the time when as a nation probably we have got a lesson to learn and we are not looking into it. So already we can't raise uh, resources that can take care of our ever increasing budget. We have borrowed and gone beyond that. Uh, but then our politicians, for example, are where we are today, I want to call that they are engaged in a regime survival scheme, which for them is actually priority number one. BBI in and of itself is actually a regime survival. You know, the way a regime wants to reincarnate, uh, you want to come back and you see how things work out. If you looked at what, uh, at what the president told young people yesterday at Bomas, you will really be angry. And it happened that yesterday was exactly two years since he told young people that uh, he would rather give a job to an old person than a young person who will steal. We know the people who've been stealing, most of them his friends and buddies whom he brought from wherever he brought them and gave them jobs. They are normally not young people. So somehow you realize that uh, the political class are at what I call the Trump point. You know, at some point, uh, Trump, when he was running, said that even if he stood in uh, Fourth Avenue in New York and shot somebody, he will still win an election. And that's what our politicians are actually doing at the moment. That even if they told you that doctors can go to hell, you will still vote them. That even if they told you whatever, they can actually, they are abusing us and telling us that, you know, everything else you're making noise, there is no correlation between uh, BBI and the doctors. I've heard somebody actually telling ju uh, Justice that uh, there is no correlation. Of course, correlation is not necessarily causation. But we are talking about prioritization. Okay. Yeah. Justice, I'll come to you on this one because uh, from uh, the budget outlook paper that the Treasury had uh, sent and uh, put out, we're talking about them borrowing close to 2 billion shillings per day um, up until Uhuru's exit on this. And of course, as Arnold has said, and as very many government officials say, debt isn't the problem. It's what you do with the money. And, and that's the thing. Very many Kenyans are wondering, we're talking about this uh, debt that's spiraling out of control yet you're not feeling the immediate benefits. Public schooling is still a problem even as you wait for next year. We don't know how that will work. Our hospitals um, are in a crisis with doctors threatening to down their tools. So what's happening with this debt that's ever increasing, yet um, the impact not being felt as should on the ground? Yeah, what what you, you need to understand, uh, Chev, is that Kenya is one of the uh, most expensive run uh, administrative units in the world. In fact, I was watching somebody saying that it is much costlier to maintain a, a Kenyan governor than the, the, a governor of uh, California, that the, the trappings of power bestowed upon a typical Ken Kenyan governor would be much more than uh, the governor of the most, uh, you know, uh, the richest county, in, uh, the richest state in America. And therefore, our problem is the, is the manner in which we have, we have structured our governance structure. Jeff, you, you see, the, the devolved units ideally should not have been political units. They should have been purely administrative and development units. If we had not devolved, devolved what's called power and the trappings of power, the amount of money going to de, uh, devolved units would have made much more, more impact than what we are seeing today. So the problem is that, um, Jeff, imagine the United States of America with the with, with the 350 million um, uh, citizens compared to barely 45 million uh, citizens of Kenya, today by 2022, our uh, our our national uh, our parliament would be 640. For the United States, the biggest economy on earth would be 435. In other words, our parliament would be bigger than the United States of America by 210 parliamentarians. Remember, the United States is the richest country. When we rank, we are 157 in terms of ranking. So the poorest country, one of the poorest countries on earth, which is Kenya, would have one of the biggest parliament on earth. I mean, and that is why we will borrow and, 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 and borrow from the internally, we will borrow externally, but that money will, will, will just go to administrative um, expenses. And therefore, if we do not handle as a country the manner in which we have structured our governance, the manner in which we have structured our administrative units, to, today, Kenya is not, cannot survive with 47 uh, devolved units, honestly. If experts will tell you what in the next 10 years we'll close shop. In the next 10, 15 years, Kenya will be a no going concern anymore because we have so much expensive. Remember, Chef, again, 
Our MPs earn much more than the American uh, parliamentarians. Our senators equally earn much more than the senators in, in America. Uh, a, a senator in Kenya, a Bomet Senate senator, earns much more than a senator of California. California's economy is 20 times bigger than the economy of the entire nation. So I, what, what in a nutshell, what am I saying? Our problem is the manner in which we have structured our governance. It is the most expensive. Remember, we, we pay, we, we, we are using almost 70%. When we talk about the devolve, the, the money that are devolved to, to, to the, the class of governance, 80 to, to 85% of that money goes to uh, recurrent expenditure. Well, what kind of nonsense is that? What, what, how, how is that devolution? If you bring uh, 5 billion and you use 4.2 billion to pay salaries and recurrent expenditure, and use a half, uh, and, and and use 20% uh, of that to ensure that the governor enjoys himself and feels like he's the president of the country until and unless the day we go back to the drawing board and get the basics, we are going to march on our way to to ruin. And the sooner we realize that, the sooner we go back to the drawing board, the sooner we listen we listen to the uh, the economist and and and, and the governor expert than more than the politicians, then we 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 we, we must. As Kenyan, be able to, and be ready to ultimately pay the price, and the price ultimately is the the price that Greece paid. That is quite a gloomy outlook put right there. But I want us to change tack a bit on this one because as we're talking about this, surely there has to be some things that are working, some things that um, probably they can borrow a leaf from and take over from there and use that in other pillars of development. When you look at the big four right now, Joy. We can see a lot that isn't working, um, a lot of mismanagement of funds, but where is it working? Where should we be looking at and saying that if they could replicate this across, we could have a better scenario moving forward? Some of the mega infrastructure projects, as um, Arnold alluded to earlier, we have seen great progress. So, for example, the road network in Kenya has expanded exponentially, and it's gotten to a place where... Almost every corner of this country now, if you're getting to the major town center or to the county headquarters, you will be going on, a, on an all-weather road all the way to, to the county headquarters, which is something that I, I, I is laudable. Like I said, pre-COVID, we're also on a very good trajectory, especially regarding trying to restructure some of the like education and things like that. We're seeing progress, the implementation of the CBC and things like that. So you are seeing some movement that is positive in that direction. Mm -hmm. But now because of COVID has sort of been stepped back a little bit. But even politically, like with the BBI process, there was a, a lot of talking and, and um, how do I put an exchange of ideas. And even now, I'm, I'm one of those people who believe the BBI is not entirely lost. The constitutional question is, is the mucky bit. And if, if it was in, within my power, I would put it in a little box and shelve it for another day. But there was a whole lot more that was put in the, in the report that is administrative in nature, is policy. Those are things that we can start implementing now and changing some of the things that were being recommended. So, for example, if we are going to deal with the issue of um, electoral fraud, for example, right now, even with the laws that we have in place, we can start restructuring the IEBC, whether it is repopulating it or, what we, or, or whether it is... Uh, finding a way to replace the ones who have resigned, trying to put in place measures. The IEBC even now has got the power to restructure boundaries. So we may not be able to change the constitution to take it to 360, but the 290 that they currently have in their constitution, can they use the census information to restructure the boundaries within what we have currently? So there is that which is working, that that which can work. So there is a certain fixation that is proving to be a bit problematic right now. But the thing also that we have seen in the last uh, few, um, let's say, months is the president also coming out very strongly and being serious about implementing projects that are being felt by Kenyans. So, for example, in Nairobi with NMS, we have seen the face of Nairobi change. This is something that with the shenanigans that we have had in Nairobi, many of us thought Nairobi was a gone case. But when you drive around, when you walk around in the estates, like I, I'm, I'm in Eastlands a lot, you see a lot of positive development. You will not be seeing a water truck from NMS delivering water to some places like Mukuru or Kibira or other places that I katika pita pita zangu. You will mm. always see a truck delivering water to people, bringing development, cutting away the garbage. So there are things that are actually working. So it's 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 um 
doom and gloom on, on a macro scale. And I agree with Arnold and also with Justice that when you're looking at the issue of how we spend our money, there is a problem there. And I've said it here before and I will repeat it. We pamper our politicians too much. If I could wave a magic wand, I would make politicians regular like the rest of us. In fact, would not call you Mheshimiwa, would call you Joem Divo MP or Joem Divo, Senator Divo. But at the Honorable First Lady, Excellency, some of those things actually cloud uh, mm -hmm. the perception of people and, and give them a sense of entitlement that sometimes is unrealistic. When they leave office, that's why you find many of them find it difficult to readjust to Raya life because, you know, you're used to, no, to certain, a certain things. So there are some things that are working, some things that can work if they're given a chance. And I'm, and I'm hoping once the hula balu with, with BBA is, is over and done with, maybe we can pick up some of those and start again, especially on education, because this year we've dropped the ball massively on education. We need to find a way of making education work mm -hmm. better for our children, especially coming this in the in the coming year. Okay, Arnold, what's working right now? What what can you, if you are to grade the government and tell them, okay, this one you got right. What's that from the big four? Jeff, before I talk about that, it's important probably that we disabuse some notion that uh, we are overrepresented. It keeps on showing up. You hear guys say that uh, the U.S. has got uh, is much bigger than we are. And just as I said that, I really mm -hmm. wanted to actually interject that and just set the record straight. Probably we will start looking at it differently. Do you know that the U.S. has got 520 elected leaders? 520,000. I'm talking about both uh, federal... You mean all the way from the ground up? Federal mm -hmm. and then the state. Mm -hmm. 520,000. If you looked at all our leaders from the cabinet and everything, they're not more than 3,000. They're not even at the 3,000 level. If you were to do the percentage, looking at their population versus us, still we don't come close. They are way up there. If you were to look at the rate of representation, they're still up there. So I, I need to actually say that, that there is a, a false equivalence between the U.S., for example, and Kenya. When we have got a total from the MCAs to everyone else, it's not more than seven, uh, 2,700. But the U.S. has got a total of 520,000. I'm talking about a half a million. No, We're no. talking about elected levels. But uh, you, you need to qualify that because those guys elect their police chiefs, they elect their judges, they we, elect their... We are not their, a federal mm -hmm. state. Country. They elect everybody. So, when you equate the two, we get it wrong at some level. But wasn't he also so speaking about the, the fact that the, even if they're elected... I really need to say this. When you take apple for apple, a senator there and a senator here, and the levels I, that, of That's why I'm saying we're actually comparing apples and oranges, oh. and it doesn't really work. It's not there that exactly. So in that particular element, when we keep on drawing some, some of these things are actually false equivalence. They don't, they can't compare. Oranges and uh, apples cannot compare. So it's important to actually point that out, that if we talk about uh, an election being expensive and everything else, then we, have, we should be forced to talk about the burden of democracy. Uh, democracy is the process we get our leaders and the cost of running that particular system of course, it's cumbersome, it's huge, and it's not necessarily good. But then look at the alternative of that. If you try to run this country without elections, without the system as we use it today, then people will be like, we are, it's a dictatorship, it's being, we have got leadership that is imposed on us, and then we will fight. So the burden of democracy is real. If we choose to live by it, then we have to actually foot that particular bill. Democracy is not cheap. Talking about what is working. So many things are working in this country, and they don't necessarily work because the state makes it work. We have to set up at a point where we say Kenya is where it is, not because one time too many, any particular regime has decided to make Kenya work, but because the people of this country deliberately, in and of themselves, wake up every day to ensure that the system works. We are where we are economically because people wake up in the morning, uh, driven people who are industrious and they love their families, they love their community, and they work even though... You've seen that meme doing round, that every time you say you have got an idea, you want to start a business, you have got about seven, ten people who are looking up to you. There's KRA, there are all manner of licenses and everything else. Mm. Despite all those odds, we still work, we still function. Number one, primarily because of the people of Kenya. Uh, politicians and the state actually rate way back, are almost at number five. For the simple reason that we, as a people, have decided to ensure that it will work for us, whether we have got a working regime or not. And you will realize how resilient our economy uh, goes through. The kind of taxation that happens here, you cannot compare it even with our neighbors. You know, for everything you earn, Jeff, I'm sure you lose almost upwards of 
every time you get your salary, if you are to work around and you don't see that 30% upwards because somebody just chops it off, it's not, you can't compare that with other people. But then it's not equivalent with the services you get in taxes. That was one. I needed to start from that particular end. But let's say for, like I said earlier on, that there are a number of things that are happening. You can look at the dams that are going out there. And I said, of course there are good things that are happening. It's not just what you do, but how you do it also matters. This is governance. How you do, how you even are running that, uh, that, that particular development, whatever you're making work, how is it working? I don't want to actually even name out NMS because all of us know that Nairobi is a dead case. That for all of us, and, and I'm happy that the people of Nairobi are actually seeing what they went to the river for. The water they brought was mud. It wasn't water. They went to the river, came back with mud, and they couldn't drink that mud. So you have got, and you know, there's not going to be change. Even if Sonko is not impeached or removed by the Senate, these wars will not end. But that mm. is what the people of Nairobi chose. So if you go, Chinua Chebe says that if you go to the forest and brings firewood and it has got ants that are biting you, you live with it. If that firewood has got smoke, you deal with it. So for the people of Nairobi, I will say this unapologetically, you have got the leadership you deserve. You voted for it, look at the members of county assemblies. You, do, you go to county assemblies in rural places and you'll be surprised. Look at the quality of the members of parliament. They are silent even as the county goes down. Things are not working, but yeah. MCAs are silent, they are playing games, MPs are not doing anything. Uh, you look at their own leadership, it's a, one bunch of frauds and serious jokers found in every scandal that shows up from the senator, the governor. There is always one drama or the other, and other counties are working well. So, that other aspect, even though the people make the country work, then also the people cause the problems we have. Okay. Like somebody said that we have seen our enemy and he is us. We are the problem and we are also the answer. We need to actually think of ourselves. And I'm thinking this pandemic time should actually help us see what can work and what doesn't work. You still can see counties that work very well and others that are joking. Let me get Justice in. He's from a different county, uh, getting us uh, from Bomet as he joins the conversation. Just as for you, we have three minutes to go as we wind this up. What is working right now? Because I know um, you're heavily critic, uh, critical of what's been happening with uh, the government so far. But if you are to stand back and look at it objectively, what do you give them a star for? Tell them this, you've gotten it right. Chef, I would want to get back at, uh, first. Allow me to respond to what uh, Andon did mention. Okay, very quickly. He, he, did, he, did, he did seem to suggest that I was comparing apples and oranges. No, I was very particular. I, I compared the, the American Congress, which is equivalent to our National Assembly, has got 435 elected leaders. The Senate, which is equivalent to our own Senate, uh, has got 67 elected senators. Our own Senate, in, by 2022, will be having 94 elected senators. So my comparative analysis was spot on. What Arnold seemed to be suggesting, in America you elect almost everybody, including the chiefs, even the policemen, the, the, the equivalent of OCBDs, OCS, in America are elected officials. So, so his, comparison, his, his suggestion is uh, off the point. So my, 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 my point is, the, 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 the Congress in America, which is equivalent to our National Assembly, has got 435. The Senate, which is equivalent to our Senate, has got 67. 67. We have 94. We are a very small economy. We must create position as a country that we can be able to uh, competitively accommodate in terms of uh, paying salaries and, and, and other emoluments. Finally, to your question about what could be working. What could be working, um, in, in my opinion, is um, initially the hospitals in the counties were working. In the first regime, when you look at the, the, the most of the county referrals hospitals, did did has had a semblance of, uh, of of success in the first regime of devolution. In the second regime, I think I, I don't know what has gone wrong because generally, even even in sectors where there, there seems to have been some successes, um, I, I think there is a lot of uh, we are going back on 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 the success and we are beginning to to see a lot of failures. In the first regime, we didn't see a lot of doctors going on strike. 
currently all over the country, most counties are witnessing um, the unrest in the medical fraternity. Um, may maybe what could also be working in, 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 in government is the infrastructure. I think there's a lot of investment in infrastructure. There is a lot of red road network we are seeing. Um, or only that the problem we could be seeing a lot of infrastructure, but the problem is the pricing. It is it is inflated. Remember, Jeff, our, our most of the uh, countries around us uh, refuse to use to, to, to connect to our rail network because of the cost. We were one of the most expensive. Uh, and and remember what uh, Yoel Museven said of our, of our the cost of uh, even acquiring land where the, the the rail network would pass. It is one of the ex most expensive in the region. So therefore, yes, there is a lot that we can see. But when we you look at the cost again, then and that is why we are borrowing a lot because we we always inflate the costing of our of our infrastructure. Uh, and therefore, if that is not um, if we just go and celebrate what we see physically. But we don't go behind and, and, and check the, the figures, the, the amount of uh, a, a tarmac road in Kenya cost almost you know 100 million. I'm told in Ethiopia it is around 31, 32 million per kilometer. That okay. that is exaggerated. Almost three times as, as uh, our Kenyan um, costing is is three times uh, more than the, the Ethiopian cost. Okay. Maybe there are other underlying factors. I may not speak because I'm not an expert, but generally the costing we must look at the costing as a country. Otherwise, we will, we, will, we will close shop soon if we are not very careful. Okay, we'll have to draw the curtains on that particular discussion. Right? That we have some feedback also coming in as far as um, this is concerned. Uh, this was uh, on Twitter at I am Jeff Morte and at K24TV. Uh, Sir Thompson Kibor saying USA is a continent, their economy is first class, and the thing is that their corruption is at zero. That's the difference between uh, USA and Kenya. Thanks for that, uh, Sir Thomas. Uh, Mutabaruka also coming in saying we need a new thinking uh, regime. That's a problem right now. We have different politicians, but they all think the same. Hashtag corruption Yoshida. Okay. Uh, Ryan Kiprotich, uh, it's unfair and an understatement. Um, right now, this BBI talk is really what we do not, and you put that in uh, uppercase letters, need. Um, as far as that's concerned. Uh, finally, Evans Geshero um, can't see anything working right now. Uh, all you're seeing is politicians running around talking about a better future in BBI. Shidan is Asai. Okay, Evans, we'll also hear you on that. Uh, the conversation continues online. You can get me at I am Jeff Morten or at K24TV at this particular point in time. This is where we draw the curtains. Thank you so much for making time this morning. And old Maliba, Asante Sana, Joe Mdivo, Asante Sana for your time. Uh, join the conversation via Skype, uh, just as mine. Asante Sana for your time as well. Thank you so much. Uh, keep those uh, SMSs coming in. Keep those tweets coming in. We'll be looking at them later on. We'll take a short break. We are back on the other side as we get interactive. Good morning.